guys welcome back to my channel i want to start by saying i am so sorry that i didn't put the 12 week update up last tuesday i'll get more into it in a minute but the good thing is there's not much changed between week 12 and week 13 so i'm gonna just mash them up i don't intend to do this every week like i want to keep each week separate so that every woman who is watching this and looking to see how I feel for that specific week will, you know, get what she wants and not feel like I'm just blending so many things together. Especially since things can change like week to week, which for me they do. So let's just go ahead and get into it. As always, I'm going to read what the apps say about the baby for that week. So for week 12, we'll start there. It has a picture of a plum. This is the bump app. You may be able to hear Sebastian. I just put him down for a nap. So sorry if you hear him in the distance. Speaking of, before we even get started, I've had a lot of you ask why I'm filming here in front of my gate, I guess, instead of in my room like I did with the first one. And that is because it is so hot in Georgia, our room will become 80 degrees during the day, even with the air on, and the sun blares through our bedroom and it's burning up hot. We bought blackout curtains in there to help keep the room cool and they're hideous. I'm sure you'll see them in an upcoming vlog or something because I do plan to start vlogging again soon. But it's just really dark in my room even when the curtains are open and it's too hot in there. So I hope that you guys don't care. I will try to work on that and maybe we can film some more <laughs> stuff in there um, soon. But that is why I film in front of this beautiful baby cake. But anyway, it says at 12 weeks, most of baby's critical systems are fully formed. Baby's about to enter the growth and maturation stage in which organs and tissues will grow and develop rapidly. Baby is now developing reflexes. So if you poke his or her body, you will likely see movement. And that is for week 12. And it says that they can open and close their fingers and toes too, which is kind of cute. And then for 13, it compares the baby to a lemon it says the baby is 2.91 inches um, 0.81 ounces and it says can you believe the baby's forming vocal cords and teeth which is kind of that's so cool you never really think about when certain body parts are being formed but like there's all these little things about the baby that you know we think of as adults but you don't think about when they're actually formed so that's kind of cool and it says and even though baby's still teeny he or she already has fingerprints and then the last thing which i think is really cool it says baby's intestines are moving from the umbilical cord to their more permanent place in the tummy who knew i had no idea the intestines were even in the umbilical cord to begin with so you can learn a lot from these apps i will list the apps that i use down below because i get asked a lot on my instagram but my main ones are the bump pregnancy plus and ovia those are the ones that I'm using the most. What I just read to you was um, the bump. And if you happen to be new and this is the first video you're watching from me, I'm having a little girl. We did do a gender reveal party. I found out through the sneak peek blood test and I will link all of that down below. We also did fertility to get her as well as with my son. So I will put the whole playlist for my trying to conceive as well as her gender reveal down below. All right, so we're gonna start with week 12 because week 13, there wasn't much difference, just a couple things. So I can do that off memory, everything else I have in my phone. But week 12, I purchased my first pair of maternity jeans and I was like, shocked at how much I loved them. I don't have like the best memory of loving my maternity jeans the first go round with my son. So I had kind of been putting it off. And then when I got them this time, I was like, what have I been waiting for? They were so comfortable. I got them at Target. I can link them below and I'll put a picture here so that you can see what they look like on me. They're just regular skinny jeans, but they have a band that comes all the way up over the belly. This top is a maternity top. I'll show it to you toward the end when I show you my bump, which is huge by the way, it's kind of weird. I think that's it because I showed you the clothes that I bought in my last one. I did go to the OB for my 12 week appointment there was no ultrasound which I was kind of sad about because I got spoiled with my son's pregnancy I had two ultrasounds at the 12 week mark so I was kind of thinking the same thing would happen but since I'm already back with my OB and no longer with the specialist unlike last time they don't do that and I guess that's just what most women go through I didn't know but the good thing from that appointment was I did get to hear her heartbeat for the first time because unlike before I also had not heard her heartbeat this entire time and I was seeing it on screen but I couldn't hear it and so I just was kind of feeling like why, aren't, why don't they sh like let us hear this anymore so I cried at my 12 week appointment when I heard it just one out of relief because at this point you still can't feel them kicking um, and two just because I had never heard it before and it makes it even I'm gonna get teary-eyed now great 
it just makes it more real and I can't believe it's a girl and it's just another baby and I'm so excited. So that was good. I don't remember how many beats she said it was. I didn't write it down immediately. Also, during that appointment, I decided to decline the NT scan or ultrasound. I'll put the word right here. I think it's neutral or neutral translucency, if I remember off the top of my head. It's the ultrasound where they check for like birth defects or if they're gonna be Down syndrome or have a heart defect, organ problems. They can catch a lot of it then. And I opted against that. I had a lot of people congratulate me on Instagram telling me that they thought that that was a really good idea to go against getting that one done. And then I had a couple people also defending the reasons why they got it done. And I don't judge any parent who chooses or chooses not to get it done. For me, this ultrasound will tell you things that could be wrong with your baby, but more than likely there's nothing you can do about it. Sadly, a lot of times parents who find out information about their baby that may not be favorable will end the pregnancy after getting this ultrasound. I am not one of those types of people. That is not something that um, I would ever do. So because I would never end a pregnancy over my child having a birth defect or Down syndrome or anything like that, to me, there was no point in getting the test. I mean, you could get it to have more knowledge about how to handle it when it when the baby comes out. But at the end of the day, there's just nothing I could do about it but worry. And so I opt against it because I'm gonna love my baby no matter what. And I feel like if God gave me a baby that had anything going on, God forbid, I'm gonna love my baby no matter what. And so knowing this information at 12 weeks, would just be far too early for me to personally be okay with and I would be panicked the, the entire time and so I'd rather not go through that. I don't judge anyone who does take this test and want to know. That is just why we did not do the NT and don't come for me in the comments if you feel differently. It's just what we do for our family. I love my kids no matter what. So the next thing I have on here is, and these are in no particular order so it's just stuff I've noticed. I'm showing a lot sooner. And when you see my stomach, and I'm gonna talk to you about weight gain, you're gonna be like, what the heck? What is going on? I don't know if you can tell it in my face yet, but I, to me, I look six months pregnant and it's kind of ridiculous. I've gained 16 pounds, which is also kind of ridiculous because I didn't gain any weight until I was 20 weeks with my son. I am technically today as I film this, I am one day shy of 14 weeks. I'm not understanding it's just baffling to me. One, I know you show sooner with your subsequent pregnancies from the first, but also it's just shocking to me how like large my stomach looks and I will show you at the end of this video. But I know how it happened and it's because I've been eating, but it's not because I wanna be eating, but I have been starving this entire pregnancy. And even though I'm getting more relief in between meals, I'm hungry all the time, even as we speak. I now have to have two breakfasts, two lunches and two dinners to make it through the day or I feel sick. That's one of the main reasons why I was not able to put the videos up, especially the 13 week one. I was just in a constant state of nausea because I would eat and in my mind I don't need to eat again till lunch but I'm sick if I'm not eating again. And it took me several days to realize okay you need to eat every two hours. So if I wake up at seven o'clock and I eat at seven right when I get up, I'm eating again at nine. And then after nine, I'm eating lunch at 11. And then I'm eating again at one, you know, and I'm trying to eat things that are healthy. And this time around, thank God, I'm not having food aversions to healthy food, which I did to my son's pregnancy. I could not eat anything green, it was nasty. This time around, I love salad, which is good, but just, the amount of calories I'm taking in compared to prior to getting pregnant is unreal. I don't even like food that much. Like I was never one to be like, oh, I love eating and I just, I can't wait to eat. That's not ever been me. And so psychologically just eating six large meals a day and maybe some snacks is already tough. Thankfully, my body responds really well to breastfeeding and I drop weight really quickly and I'm just hoping that that is the same case with this baby and I had an oversupply with my first pregnancy and I lost, I actually was underweight about four months after I gave birth. However big I get is just however big I'm gonna get and I hope that y'all don't care because in come February, I'm probably gonna be huge. <laughs> All right, the next thing says, not put off by Brandon's smells. 
and smells is kind of like smells is kind of like an aggressive word like his cologne does not bother me this time I'm noticing uh, his lotion doesn't bother me this time I don't smell things in the house as that I used to like as nasty I'm pretty good like nothing is making me sick as far as like things that I'm used to the only thing I don't like the smell of anymore which kind of stinks is my my body soap which I've been using I don't know my whole life I just use Dove and I've always used Dove the same Dove the exfoliating one and now it doesn't stink to me but I don't like it but I'm gonna keep using it because we have a ton of it that's the only thing that smells different to me but I love the fact that like Brandon's cologne doesn't put me off his lotion doesn't put me off like him in general doesn't put me off because with my first pregnancy I could not stop Stand it. I made him do everything away from me and I was like you don't really even have to come too close. The next thing says no more metformin and I did get questions on if I was still taking it and the answer is no. Thank God. I started taking the metformin I think in January when I got my IUD taken out. I had been taking the metformin because I have PCOS and it's really helpful for women with PCOS who are trying to get pregnant. And after about 12 weeks according to my OB your body naturally will start working as it should be because it's in pregnancy mode it will probably go back to doing not the right thing um once the baby is born i did not get gestational diabetes last time so i'm hoping that i don't get it this time um, because i know one of the options for gestational diabetes aside from changing your diet is to get put on metformin luckily i have experience with it it's not the worst for me at least because i'm used to it but i'm really grateful to not have to take it every day because I was taking it multiple times a day and now I can stop so that's nice. As far as other things that I'm taking, I'm still taking Unison but only once a day now and it's been great. I just recently stopped taking it in the morning so I was what I was doing if this is your first time hearing about this is I was taking one pill a day cracking it in half taking half in the morning and half at night and it's been really really nice to be able to like live during the day and not feel like I need to be laying down at all times it just played a huge role in how I had been feeling this whole pregnancy which you're already tired but taking half a sleeping pill in the morning just to keep your nausea at bay can take a lot away from you because you don't feel like you're present in, the, in your everyday life and so I'm ready to have my life back basically so um that's been nice and my ob suggested that i keep taking the other half at night until 14 or 15 weeks she said by then you'll feel perfectly fine again which is true and i know i keep comparing this pregnancy to my last one but it's the only reference i have and i remember at 15 weeks with sebastian's pregnancy i was fine like i felt completely good again the next thing says week 12 leg pain has stopped but let me tell you something Week 13, leg pain is back and on the other side. So that's what I meant earlier when I said things can change week to week and why I wanna keep these videos separate because if I had made this into two videos, I would have been like, yeah, y'all, the leg pain that I told y'all about stopped. And then this video would have been, well, y'all, it's back. When the leg pain started, it was in my left leg and now it is in my right leg. I didn't know sciatica was down the right. I always thought it was down the left side. So now I'm starting to think that it's not sciatica and it's just my big old womb sitting back on some nerves. I don't know. I really don't know. But I'm constantly shifting um, from fetal position to fetal position each side to the left and the right all night long and it's painful also um, I think my hips are already starting to get wide they just hurt more now than ever and I think my doctor said that it's the relaxing hormone and your joints and things are just getting soft and that's what happens and it's probably true so the leg pain having come back and for week 13 really dealing with this food thing and just trying to eat on time and not get nauseous that has been my main struggle through week 13 and i really appreciate everyone who sent a dm to me on instagram asking if me and the baby were okay because i hadn't posted a video and because i hadn't been on my stories and truthfully you guys as far as stories are concerned i don't really sit on my stories i know a lot of other girls on youtube um you know or on their instagram stories every single day all day long and that has just never been me um i get on there when i really have something i want to share or say um but it's not like me to just have my phone in my hand all day i don't post a photo on my instagram every single day i'm active on there so if you send me a dm every day i will get the dm but I'm not always um, posting photos just because I am a real person. Even though social media is my job, I can't sit on social media all day. That's just what it is. I just can't. I'm not that person. I never have been. But I'm always down to talk if you message me on there. Anyway, uh, I do appreciate everybody 
reaching out to me, um, making sure that we are okay if I'm not posting and things like that. Uh, I think that pretty much wraps up the 12 and 13 week update. Next Tuesday, I will have the 14 week one up on its own. It will be on time and it won't be lumped in with another week, I promise. <laughs> um, let me show you my bump really quick. So this is 14 weeks tomorrow. I know this video is 12 to 13, but this is 14 weeks and I don't understand how it is so big already. Whatever, I'm proud of my baby girl in there. And dar she blows. All right guys, if you enjoyed this video, please give it a thumbs up and don't forget to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already. Leave a comment below about how you're feeling, what week you're on, if you are pregnant or if you're just here just because you wanted to watch. I missed you guys, but I am back and I'm so excited. Uh, I'll see you in my next one, bye.